Richard Melvin is with us now, Sales and Marketing Director at uh, agency, a company, organization called Bizarre Reality and Interactive Software Solutions. It's a company that specializes in augmented and virtual reality. A very warm welcome to you. First of all, you are a real person sitting in front of me. I am. Okay, I just needed to make sure that we're not <laughs> in, in like a Westworld kind of uh, scenario. Richard, first of all, maybe just as a starting point for the uninitiated, redefine for me, if you would, the concept of augmented reality and why it's finding this traction. All right, so I suppose you get, you get augmented reality and then you get virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And there's a common, common misperception that the two are the same thing. Mm -hmm. With virtual reality, through the use of like a headset, a user is fully, immer uh, fully immersed in that environment. So you look around and you are on the moon. 360 degrees. 360 yeah. degrees. Whereas with augmented reality, on the other hand, digital content is added into the world around us. So with Pokemon Go, um, you were seeing digital characters in the world around us as if they were standing there. Whereas if it was virtual reality, you would have been in that virtual world mm. looking at those Pokemon. All right, we're going to talk about Pokemon Go in just a moment because it came and it went fairly quickly from what I can discern. But why do you think, whether it's virtual reality or augmented reality, why is it finding such traction and particularly in the brand development space? Yeah, well, if you take a look at the people that are investing in virtual reality and augmented reality, you've got the look likes of all the, the major corporate giants like Facebook and uh, Microsoft and all of that. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg saying that augmented and virtual reality will be um, part of our everyday lives. So that being said is it's taking away to add digital content into the world around us. So we could be speaking here and I could be reading my speech off my little eyeglasses and, and we'd be able to interact with that digital information and the world around us. Who knows, maybe you are, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, what does your agency do? So Bizarre Reality, we specialize in augmented and virtual reality um, from a commercial point of view. So we actually work in on quite a few exciting things, maybe the next Pokemon Go, if we're lucky enough. but. Um, that being said, we, we joined the tray or jumped onto the bubble of augmented and virtual reality before it became a household name. So we've done quite a lot of research and development. We went up to Silicon Valley um, and we saw what companies were doing over there and how the industries were shaping out. And we brought that information back with us to South Africa and we've created a solution for the South African market. The sense I get in the brand development space is that marketers say it's nice and it's a nice to have. It's not a necessity. Are you starting to see a change in that perception? Yeah, definitely. At the moment, yeah, you're spot on. It's, it's starting to be used as a gimmick. You know, it's very gimmicky. This is why are you... But for us, we, we try to focus on more of a value offering that has a tangible return on investment for the companies that are using the technology. You know, so at the moment, as with any industry in the beginning, it is a bit gimmicky until you can find your feet as to where the industry is going. And the, the nice thing about augmented and virtual reality is that every industry can have its own practical use as to how these technologies mm. work. And I sense Pokemon Go was a, was a tipping point. Yes, yeah, it definitely brought augmented reality to the forefront, whereas with virtual reality, the hardware is consumer ready. The hardware has crossed the chasm from the early adopters to the early majority, as whereas with augmented reality, the hardware we're going to be looking at is smart glasses that people, so we're still a way off from that. Whereas with Pokemon Go using your phone as the medium to view that augmented reality, it really did bring it to the forefront. Was it a failure? I mean, it came and went very quickly. It's definitely not the amount no. of money that they made. But why, why was it so quick? Though? So to, to be fair to Pokemon Go, I mean, all games have a, a life cycle. You know, you can play it for so much, you get addicted to it, and then another game comes along. With Pokemon Go, it, it was asking a bit more than most games. You know, as a user, you had to actually now get up and physically go and walk around and catch these Pokemon. After a while, that's, it's fun, but the novelty wears off, you know. There's also a sense of repetitiveness, you know. You walk around from Pokestop, you collect your items, you catch the Pokemon, and you maybe gym now and then, and then you repeat. You know, you can only catch so many Pikachus or Bulbasaur's before you've you've had it enough, you know? I'm just impressed that you can name the characters. So, <laughs> so what then is the advice to brands who want to play in this space? What would you tell them? Play in the augmented and virtual reality space? It, it, it's it's a, it's a very interesting question, but for what I must say is you need to try and derive a value from your offering. You know, a gimmick is, it can only last for so long. You know, and in South Africa, we had a, uni a unique opportunity for brands to jump on, you know, because not everybody has seen augmented and virtual reality, how it can be used to its full potential. So brands, are, there's a space now for them to adopt this technology and create that impression of this is how we are using it, this is how, where the industry is going. But if I did have to give some advice, mm -hmm. make sure there's value around it. 
All right, and you've convinced me that you are a real person. <laughs> uh, Richard Melvin, thank you very much. Jimmy, thanks so much. Uh.